Prologue. We were sitting around the president's table at Sue's family restaurant. There were 30 of us volunteers plus John Taylor. We had many maps of Mexico showing what was left of Mexico in the different states. If Mexico is going to be a state of our nation, then let's see if we can have the Mexican states be called counties. All agreed, John asked. Yes, was heard around the table. Watch your back. You are going up against people willing to make a buck by harming other people by selling them deadly drugs. Bill and Pete will have a hundred minute men on standby. If you need a thousand, we will send the hundred and call up the rest and get them to you ASAP. We have worked the odds with God. There is still a 65% chance that one or more of you will be killed. Stay alert, stay alive. You are my brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. I wish I were going with you. John had a tear in his eye. We will be fine, Dad, Tony shared. Tony, Russia is going to feel like a birthday party compared to this. All of you are going into a war zone for the next few months. Don't feel shy about asking for help. John's voice was reflecting the emotion he was feeling. The 30 had been going through additional training. Every team member had a 9mm with 400 rounds of ammunition. Tony had finally shot a pistol and rifle. He did okay. Not great, but okay. Willa was the one that could shoot a rattlesnake in the eye at 20 yards. She had been shooting all her life and knew that guns made her safe if she went anywhere outside of the house. Brad, too, grew up with guns. And when he fired the M16 for the first time, he smiled and put four more rounds into the bullseye. The holes from the five shots at 100 yards could easily be covered with a coin the size of a quarter on the target. It feels like my 22 at the ranch. Many of the teams also took M16s with 400 pound to 500 rounds of ammo, including the team of Tony, Brad Willa, and Gloria. They each took one with a 500 count of ammunition. There was a foot of snow outside in Omak. The natives and the buffaloes were teaching the newcomers how to ignore the snow and continue with life. The sidewalk crews moved inside. The building crew had 105 homes with people living in them. They had another 400 with roofs on them and were quickly working on the insides to finish. The first apartment building would be done before Thanksgiving. The second apartment building would be done before Christmas. The third apartment building was two weeks away from a roof. The fourth apartment building had the first floor framed in. Everybody was living somewhere with a real roof over their head. Things were crowded, but everyone could see the progress being made every day. Hundreds of people would turn out for another roof. They would clap and sing songs and cheer as sections of metal roofing were completed. The entire community was sky high. Often at the end of a cold, hard day, if the workers stopped for a beer, the first round was always paid by others. On Monday, October 31st, 2018, Tony and Willa, along with Brad and Gloria, walked into the capital city, Jose Maria Chetumal of Quintana Roo, on the southern tip of Mexico. Chetumal is on the border with Belize. Mexico, officially called the United Mexican States, is a federal republic. It is south of the United States and north of Guatemala and Belize. It is also bordered by the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. It has a total area of 758,050 square miles before the earth changes, 1,964,075 SCOCOM, which made it the fifth largest country by area in America and the 14th largest in the world. Mexico had a population of 112,655 and is estimated that there was a loss of about 10% with the earth changes, both in population and the area. Its capital and largest city were Mexico City. It is no longer a livable place, many died. Mexico was divided into 32 federal entities, of which 31 were states and one was a federal district. Since the earth changed in a major fire in the capital, there are now only 30 states. The entire federal zone is in shambles. The people from up north were going to have to deal with 30 presidents. Most of them had realized the precarious position they were now in. The drug lords, if they worked together, could easily take over the country. The central leadership was gone, and even the military was trying to figure out who was boss. The many drug lords paid better. Many of the presidents could verify that fact. Several presidents were also drug lords. Mexico had become as corrupt as Washington, D.C. Chapter 1 Day 1 October 31st, 2018, Tony, Willa, Brad, and Gloria made up the team that was going to plug the southern tip of Mexico. 
The 26 others made up two to four person teams that were going to be spread out to their north. The four targeted the municipal district of Quintana Roo with the municipal seat named Jose Maria Chitumo with a population of around 11,000. There were about 2,000 families. A good portion of the Yucatan Peninsula had vanished into the Gulf of Mexico with the Earth's changes. The city Jose Maria Chitumo is now bordering on the Gulf of Mexico. It was a little after nine o'clock in the morning. This small part of southern Mexico was in alignment with the U.S. Eastern time zone. The majority of Mexico was in the central time zone. It was just after seven o'clock a.m. in Omak, Washington. Is this a ghost town? Gloria asked as they entered the town square. The main road entered the square from the north, made a left turn and headed east, heading down to the water of the Gulf of Mexico. It sure looks like it, Willa shared. There was no one on the streets, no dogs barking, nothing moving, not even the wind. They did hear a child crying. Look, there is a man over there. Let's go ask him where a cafe is, Brad suggested. The four pulled their rolling cases along behind them. Each case contained 12 cubic feet of space, and the hope was the case could become their home away from home. There were seven days of food, guns, clothes, blankets, sleeping cots, and Tony and Brad each carried a tent along with each of them had a heavy backpack. When Tony got near, he said, hello. The man had been crying. He looked at Tony with anger for invading his space. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Tony and the others turned away. Just then, two white eagles landed in the big tree not far away. They were mates, and one was screaming for joy because the other had a big snake. It looked like the symbol of Mexico. Only the eagles were the U.S. bald eagle, white eagle, and not the Mexican golden eagle. In broken English, are you from the United States? The man asked. See, si, yes, Brad said with strength. Why are you here? The man looked at the two eagles in a big nest near the top of the tree eating the snake. To help you know God and to assist you in bringing paradise to your country, Gloria said in clear and correct Mexican Spanish. My brother before he died told me of a dream. He said there would be a symbol on the day you showed up, but there would be 30 of you. The man shared. Tony was still watching the birds. Is that enough of a symbol? Tony asked, because there are 30 of us spread out all over Mexico. I am called the big fisherman by the native people where we live. The man shook as he realized he was looking at his brother's dream come true. His brother also told him it would be led by the big fisherman. Are you Christians? We follow St. John the Beloved by Jesus. He has returned to be the comforter and we will teach you what he has taught us. Willa shared, you will soon see Jesus and will be able to ask him as heaven descends upon this planet. The man went to shake his head again. Then he looked up at the two eagles. He had never seen them before. Why are you so very young here to do this? The man asked. Tony looked up at the eagles again. My friends and I stopped 99 convicts from entering our town. They had 60 M16s and other weapons. We had none, only what we had learned from St. John. We were awarded adult status. We choose to come here. I was mourning the loss of my brother. By default, I am the leader of our town. Call me Poncho. I am the only Poncho in our town. I was going up the mountain to see what is poisoning our water supply. Almost everyone is sick, Poncho shared. This is my wife, Willa, and our best friends, Brad and Gloria. They are also married. I am Tony. Can we come with you? Tony asked. Nice to meet you. Yes, I think it best if you do. I will show you a good place to hide. Sorry I cannot offer you a house to stay in. We have none available. Poncho looked at Tony. How did you get the name Big Fisherman? That's fine. We have tents. Gloria shared. A short time ago, I caught a salmon that weighed as much as I did. Poncho looked at the four smiling faces and thought about what he would do with a salmon as big as Tony. What did you do with a fish that big? We invited our friends over and enjoyed it for dinner. My father likes placing slices of sweet onions and slices of pineapple in and on the fish. It adds just a hint of sweet and tart taste to the salmon as it also adds a bit of moisture as the fish cooks. Tony smiled. They climbed a mountain on the south side of the village. They were about 200 feet high and could see the town square and the road to the north along with the new coastline of the Gulf. 
They went through a locked gate, and Poncho turned the lock very quickly. The four were working as each of the cases weighed 100 pounds or more. The backpacks weighed 60 pounds on the girls and 85 pounds on the guys. The lock opened, and after they were through the gate, Poncho closed and locked it again. Another 100 feet up, there was a plateau with a pool with a waterfall filling the pool. The plateau was about an acre in size, with the pool taking up about 25% of the area. This water supplies all of our needs. We use about 30,000 gallons of water per day. Poncho was looking at the big screens for the intake. He made the cross as he moved his hand from head to stomach, then across his chest. What is it? Tony saw the dead animals laying on the screens. Looks like rats and maybe a cat. Poncho shared, someone has put them there. Let's get them out of there. Gloria translated for Poncho. Poncho went to a small building and unlocked it. He pulled out a small fishing net. He also had a device that Tony had seen old people use to pick up things from the ground. By squeezing the handle, the clamps at the other end would close. Poncho handed Tony the fishing net. He pointed to a garbage can with a lid on it. He looked at Brad. Could you take the lid off and make sure there's a plastic bag? Yes, there is a bag. Brad was pulling it up and making sure it wrapped around the top of the plastic can. Good. Poncho reached down and pulled up the dead cat to just below the surface. Tony put the net under it, and Poncho released it to fall into the net. Tony carefully dropped the dead cat into the garbage sack. When he turned, Poncho had one of the rats just below the water level. One cat and three rats later, the deed was done. Poncho then took out a two-gallon can of chlorine and put it into a cradle. He carefully removed the sack with dead animals from the plastic can. He tied a knot in the opened end of the sack. He removed the lid on the chlorine, and with the sack in one hand, he picked up the chain. You do not want to inhale the fumes from the chlorine. It will make the water stink for a day, but our water will be clean again. Poncho was about 20 feet from the cradle when he pulled the chain and eased the can over, so it would pour out its contents into the pool. That is done. Come, I will show you where to camp. Do you have camping gear besides your tents? Poncho asked. The four northerners all said, yes. Poncho leads the little group over to some trees. Do you see the clearing? The four northerners all said, no. My father built this long ago when I was a small boy. I helped him plant the trees, follow me. Poncho directed. The five went through a maze and came out into a clearing that was 50 by 80 feet. The tall trees provided the area in shade and one could see out very well and watch the pool and waterfall. The only sign of mankind was a primitive looking rake to help move the pine cones away from a spot big enough for the tents. Only my family know where this is. My people are starving. The drug lords have converted much of the good land into plants to make the drugs. We still had land we grew crops on. That land disappeared into the gulf when the earth changes took place. And we lost many buildings and many people. My brother was one of them. Poncho was near tears again. Has anybody died from lack of food? Gloria asked. No, but soon our baby grows weaker every day, along with many other babies. Poncho, sit with us. We want to see if we can create some food, Willa suggested. Poncho was envisioning a burrito like he would make when he had food. Tony led everybody in the Lord's Prayer, and Gloria called out brown rice. A six-gallon bucket appeared. It was a food-grade bucket with a locked lid on top and a nice handle. On the side was a label with cooking directions in both Spanish and English. Black beans, another six-gallon bucket showed up. Freeze-dried peas, corn, diced tomatoes, shredded beef, and shredded chicken, Gloria whispered. Five additional buckets appeared. Corn flour, another bucket showed up. Two gallons of hot salsa and two gallons of corn oil. There they were, eight six-gallon buckets and big two-gallon jugs of hot salsa and corn oil. I suggest we help the village eat before we worry about tents, Willa offered. I agree, Gloria stated. Can you make ten buckets of each? Poncho asked. My friends and I have grills to cook on. We think so, Brad offered. How many friends with grills? Tony asked. I have twenty-three, so there will be twenty-four cooking. Let's go. Brad was used to farm work and picked up the heavy buckets of rice and beans. When they got to the gate, the combination spells love in English. L is the 12th letter of the alphabet. O is the 15th. 
V is the 22nd and E is the 5th. The combination is 12, 15, 22, and 5. Poncho showed Willa, and when she announced, got it. They went through the gate. Tony and Brad looked at the fencing. It was covered with blackberry vines as far as they could see in both directions. That should slow somebody down, Tony shared. They would have to want to get in there very bad, Brad shared. Brad and Tony picked up their buckets along with Gloria and Poncho, making their way through the gate. Willa had one bucket of the meat and the salsa. She locked the gate and continued heading down the hill. Poncho, is there a lot of snakes around here? Gloria asked. Poncho stopped and turned to Gloria to answer. We have rain two times every year. I have not seen a snake since I was a little boy when a farmer killed it and brought it to town. Poncho shared, it was big to a five-year-old, maybe as long as I was tall. That snake, the white eagles, had been five to six feet tall. Then it truly was a sign as your brother said you would see, Gloria stated in Spanish. Yes, it would seem so. Poncho turned and continued down the mountain. My brother also talked of the big fisherman, an Indian maiden. He also said some of those that would come would know our language. When they got to the park that was next to the town square, Poncho set down his buckets and got the big grill going. He put on a large two-gallon pot of beans and another two-gallon pot of brown rice. He went over to his home and asked his sons, please come out and help me. There was a bit of moaning and complaining. I have food, we will eat today. We will be okay. He went inside and carried a five-gallon carboy of water that was just inside the door to the grill and added water to the two pans. It took all his strength and determination to carry it 100 feet. When the boy showed up, boys, our friends have given us food. Run the water until you smell chlorine like we do at your end, and when you get back, I will feed you, Poncho directed. Can we get Mandel and Jose to help? Diego asked. Yes, if they are able, and I will feed them too. Poncho advised, Jess, get all of your friends to help. This needs to be done quickly. I'll feed them all. Okay, Papa. Jess was short for Jesus. He was 15, soon to be 16, but was stunted by about six because he had diabetes since childbirth. It was a wonder he was even still alive. He did have a fastball and an unhittable knuckleball. His changeup usually danced across the plate and was fouled off. Diego, the 11-year-old, would follow his brother anywhere and be quickly running after him to help. Jess stopped and told his brother Diego to open the first facet. Pancho smiled. He was so proud of those two boys. He looked at Tony and Brad and had a thought. My oldest son has diabetes. He probably won't live much longer. I would do anything to have him healed. Brad and Tony are good at stopping bullets. Willa and I have been trained to heal many things, and diabetes is one of them. Gloria shared with Poncho in his language. My wife is going blind? Poncho asked with sadness. It may be from a lack of nourishment. We need to see her, but we think we can heal her too. Willa smiled. Poncho did not understand everything that was said in English, but he got the message. Poncho looked at the cross on the church. Thank you, God, for sending me these beautiful people. He turned back to his preparations and had three fathers of the boys that were helping Jesus and Diego standing there. Pancho, do you have food? One of the men asked. Yes, we need to do half portions, then two hours half portions again. And hopefully, we can do that four times today and six times tomorrow. It has been too long since we have eaten. We need to do this slowly. Get your grills. I need help cooking and serving. Get more water, too. Pancho was excited, and the men jumped into action. It had been several weeks since they had killed their last three cows. The team had their heads together planning for this village. Gloria came over and stood next to Pancho, speaking to him in his language. Did you have chickens? Do you have a chicken pen big enough for a thousand baby chickens? See and see, we do not have anything to feed them with, Pancho shared. We will start with a thousand pounds of chicken feed. Gloria shared and turned to Tony and nodded. We had 40 cows before the earth changes and many hundreds of chickens. They are all gone. With the earth changes, we lost our food supply. Pancho pointed towards the water and shook his head. He did not mention the 12 or so horses and the many dogs that were also gone, providing food for the community. 
So far, no one had died from starvation, but it was getting close. The children did not run and play. The babies were too weak to cry. People were angry and did not laugh or smile. We may be able to get you milk cows, Gloria shared. In the briefing before they came, it was learned that the buffalo needed more land around Omak and cows may be available for the hotter climate as the meat of choice was becoming buffalo. Pancho hugged Gloria and let out a gasp as he released some fear that he had been carrying since his brother died in the waves. You are going to need more food. Let us get to work doing our magic as Jesus did, Gloria shared. Yes, like Jesus, Pancho shivered as he whispered. Pancho looked at the cross on the church again. Pancho watched the four sit in a square. They said the Lord's Prayer, and after several minutes off to the side, a stack of 106-gallon buckets was full of brown rice appeared. The four looked at their accomplishment, and the four stood and did a high five, and then sat back down to focus on black beans. This came easier, and in half the time, there was another stack of 25 buckets, stacked four high for again a total of 100. The peas, corn, tomatoes, shredded chicken, shredded beef, corn flour, all came easier and faster. The salsa and corn oil also came quickly. The four were learning. Pancho was standing there along with several hundred people, the parents of the boys working on the water system. They were all in shock. Pancho, get them moving. Tony smiled. Now, okay, your people are hungry. Tony laughed as he saw a few smiles. Lorenzo's son was nearby. Little L, can you run over to the faucet by the church and turn it on until you smell chlorine? Turn the sign to red, then turn off the faucet, please. Pancho asked. You will eat first with Jesus in the water crew. Pancho saw the 11-year-old take off at a slow run towards the church. It looked like he was giving it his best effort. Pancho started laughing. Okay, now, he turned to the crowd. These are our friends from the new U.S. government. Pancho started in a loud voice. Who are they, Pancho? A voice in the crowd asked. Pancho looked at Gloria. Gloria pulled a cross that hung on a chain around her neck for all to see. She spoke in Spanish. We are children of God the same as you. Let us be known as the Rainbow Warriors. We follow Saint John, the beloved of Jesus. He has come again to be the comforter of mankind as Jesus promised. On Wednesday, after you have your strength back, we will take you to heaven where Jesus is. Gloria looked around. There were 12 grills set up now and the smell of food was even making Gloria's stomach rumble. Senor Pancho has told the boys that have been working on getting chlorine in the water pipes that they can eat when they got done. Come boys. Gloria started clapping and everyone clapped and cheered as the boys came forward. She had seen the boys come running up. They felt like they had just won a baseball game. They had turned on a hundred faucets and waited until the smell of chlorine was coming through. The chlorine in the pipes was about 10 to 20 parts per million, enough to kill the worst bugs. The boys would flush the system in the morning and all should be fine again. They left each faucet with the red sign, do not use, not potable. Tomorrow they would flush the system and turn the sign over showing the green side with potable water. Pancho took a deep breath. We have not eaten for a while. There was much agreement with what he said. Let's start slowly with a small burrito, then again in two hours another burrito, and again in four and six hours. Tomorrow we will eat six times starting at seven o'clock, and on Wednesday we will be back to eating more regular servings. Is that okay? Pancho looked out for his friends and neighbors. Everyone was smiling and nodding yes. A large group of women and children were bringing out little plates, thousands of them. There were four serving lines, and the women took over serving the food. They were serving about a hundred every five minutes. More grills were set up until there was 24 cooking away. Soon a thousand was being served every 10 minutes. Pancho had told his sons to take Maria, their mother, a burrito and introduce Gloria and Willa to her. Many minutes later, when the line in front of Pancho came to an end, he was surprised when Maria was standing in front of him. I can see you, Maria said. You look really beautiful. Pancho shared, thank you, God. Have you eaten? Maria asked. Pancho had to think for a moment. No. Make yourself a burrito and sit down, Maria commanded with a giggle. She was happy to be able to say such a thing. 
Poncho's adopted brother Lorenzo handed Poncho a small plate with a burrito on it. Listen to your wife, amigo. We have 15 minutes before everyone lines up again. When Poncho sat down, he took a bit of his burrito. His eyes closed and he savored the taste of real food for the first time in over 10 days. He had to think, maybe it had been longer than 10 days. He couldn't remember what he ate or when he ate it. Dad, why does this food taste so good? Jesus asked. I believe it comes from God. Poncho shared. Okay. Jesus thought for a few seconds. Did you know the girls healed me? I'm not sick anymore. That's fantastic. Poncho moved to hug his son, and Maria caught his plate that was heading to the ground, saving his half-eaten burrito. When Poncho unwrapped from the hug, he looked for the rest of his burrito. Maria handed it to him. I'm sure glad you can see. Poncho wiggled his eyebrows. Maria blushed. We will see. You have a very long day planned for yourself, my love. Our town is eating. I feel like I could move mountains. Poncho shared. Where are the girls? They have volunteered to help with the dishes. Maria shared with pride. What water are they using for the dishes? Poncho asked in alarm. Tony was able to transport water from the waterfalls above the chlorine. He then said the Lord's Prayer and heated the water. Jesus shared. He says we will know how to do the same things before they leave here. Poncho thought about this. Poncho, Willa says Tony is the son of St. John. A short time ago, Tony and Willa went to Russia, saved the president of Russia's life, and trained over 400 men and women. They found a mountain of gold and then helped transport over 1 to 100 buffalo, so Russia could start their herd of buffalo. These four are master teachers. I want to know what they know, Maria stated with conviction. I do too, Daddy, Jesus shared, to take water from a waterfall and put it into a sink, to create food to feed 11,000 people, to heal people of many things. These four are like Jesus. How can we do this? Poncho, I had a thought the same as yours and Willa read my mind. She said, do not put me on a pedestal. I walk the same earth that you do. Remember, Jesus said to follow him. He did not tell us to put him on a pedestal and then say, I can't do what he did. Maria giggled. Gloria said, if Mexico became part of the new United States, we would have representatives from each district and a governor of the state of Mexico. I saw the way people looked at you today. There was a lot of love and respect there. The border would be open to the other states. Our children might have a future. Maria whispered this last sentence. Let me think on all this, Pancho asked. Maria smiled. She knew she had gotten through to him. Pancho, the beans are ready. Will they have cooked enough to eat? We will need several buckets of things, Lorenzo shared. Pancho pointed to the eight stacks of a hundred buckets. Friends, that is what these buckets are for. Take and use what you need. Let's feed our neighbors and families. Gloria came over to talk. Pancho, let's have each household take a jug of salsa home with them at this meal, okay? Okay, what's the plan? Pancho asked. Have each household take a jug of corn oil home at the third meal. Have them take a bucket of corn flour home at the last meal today. First meal tomorrow, another bucket of corn flour, then chicken, beef, peas, corn, and tomatoes for the last meal. Have the men and boys move the wagons and deliver rice and beans to each household. Gloria shared, by Wednesday, the people can cook for themselves. Great plan. Poncho was starting to feel his energy coming back. I love it. Let's do it. Poncho thought for a minute. How many healings did you and Willa do? I don't know, 30 or 40. We lost count. Gloria shared. I thank you very much. Poncho's voice had given out, and all he had was a whisper. Gloria hugged him, and she worked on his voice. You're welcome. Do you need anything else? No. Poncho's eyes got big as he realized he had his voice back. Thank you again. His voice was stronger, louder, and a few octaves deeper. Ten minutes later, all was ready on the serving lines. Poncho told his neighbors the plans. He was cheered and applauded. He tried to tell everyone it was Gloria's and the others' plans. The people did not care. They were ready to start celebrating. They cut 15 minutes off their serving time. They got it to an hour and a half. By the fourth and last meal of the day, they got the serving time down to one hour and 10 minutes. 
Pancho had suggested a little bigger portion, and they had gone from eight tortillas to nine tortillas. Beans were being added also to the three later meals. They increased the portions to a tablespoon and a half of each of the items. At the end of the day, there were about 130 empty food buckets. Tony and Brad, with help, lined up 100 of the buckets, and Tony gave a class on how he had gotten a sink full of water four times. Tony walked Brad through it several times. Jesus had listened and watched Tony all four times. He went over to a bucket, calmed himself, and imagined he was in the church and pointed at it like Tony and had water flowing into the bucket until it ran onto the ground. He then moved and pointed to the next one and filled it too. Diego went and got the empty carboys that had the water used to cook everything. Jesus filled them all. He went to the empty sink and put the cork in it and then filled the sink. Pancho was watching his sons. Maria came up to see the last of the containers being filled with water. The bigger kids joined the water squad, moving the full carboys to the tables. The lids were put on the buckets and they too were stationed to be used by the cooking crew tomorrow. Maria went over with a cup and drew out some of the water to taste. Her smile told all the water was alive and clean. She brought the cup over to Pancho and he too drank the water down. He held the empty cup and everyone cheered. Someone found a ladle and someone else brought out a large box of small glasses. Soon there were dozens of people with small glasses full of water and one would have thought they were in a tavern with the finest beer. Toasts were being made and the four from Omak were winning the trust of this beautiful little town. Willa and Gloria were busy healing hundreds of the worst cases of dysentery. Brad and Tony were on the way to help the girls when they were asked by Jesus for a demonstration on stopping things. He had heard this from Willa and Gloria when they were healing him and his mother. Tony and Brad looked at each other. Brad looked up. He silently asked Tony if they should take them to God. Tony shook his head for a N.O. Let's teach Jesus how to stop tennis balls. He's ready. Are you bringing the box? Brad asked. Your call, Tony directed. The box was a reinforced 4x4x4 and had about 12,500 tennis balls. It saved the factory time and costs in packaging the tennis balls. The box was sitting in Omak in a warehouse. I'll do it. I need practice. Say over by that tree, Brad who asked. Again, your call? Seems like a good place to me. Tony laughed. He was being gentle, but his plan and hopes were that when they were done here, Brad would have the confidence to run such a project with Gloria. Brad's dad did the same thing to him. Yes, he would step up. This was his and Gloria's assignment with the hope things would go faster with Tony and Willa being here. Wow, they seemed to be going a hundred miles per hour. I'll toss you teach, Tony asked. Brad nodded his agreement as he neared the tree. Tony watched, and soon his friend was carefully cutting the top open of the newly arrived box. He had gathered around him dozens of boys and girls wanting to know what was in the box. John's assistant, Nancy, had found a small sports manufacturer in Coerta Allen, Idaho. He was just getting ready to lock his doors and close for good at around 9 o'clock in the morning in mid-October. Nancy negotiated for a million tennis balls a month until she stopped the order. He asked how long, and she said, let's plan on five years with three extensions. She also wanted a million of each of the five basic lanyards per month under the same five years with three, with three extensions. When the phone call was done, he went in and sat down at his secretary's desk and looked at her picture of Jesus. He called her phone, and after chatting for 10 minutes, he asked her to come back to work. Nancy was sending a letter of credit to the county bank. The plant was in business once again, all he had to do was retool and expand the tennis ball line and the lanyard line. He called his wife. She screamed, but it was a happy scream. He called his mechanic and the man said he was on his way. He would bring in two of the crew to assist him with the needed changes. He called the bank and they confirmed his letter of credit was there and all he had to do was come by and sign the agreement. The community was not that big and good news traveled almost as fast as bad news. Everyone started showing up. His wife came and even brought back the can of coffee he had taken home the day before. They all got half a cup of coffee and toasted the good news. One of the workers asked, how long is the contract for, boss? When they heard the answer of five years with three five-year extensions possible, everybody took the last swallow of their coffee, put the cups in the sink, and filed out to go to work. Several shouted their excitement once they left the office area. One of the men had mowed a lawn for $1.50 the day before. 
$20 a day sounded wonderful. That would make living easy. $20 in silver or gold is like $200 in greenbacks before the earth changes. Brad told the kids they could take a ball to play with, but when they were done, to please put the balls back into the box. He had no idea if any of them understood what he had said. Jesus did say something in Spanish, and hundreds of balls were soon leaving the box. Diego was also there standing next to his brother. Diego, can you take these six balls to Tony, please? Brad asked as he pointed towards Tony. Brad realized he could shorten the number of words and probably improve understanding. Si, sí, senor, Diego answered. Brad was happy when Diego went towards Tony with his arms full of tennis balls. Brad and Tony moved out to the center of the square, standing about 30 feet away from each other. Thousands stood around the two. Gloria stepped forward and started explaining in Mexican Spanish what was happening. Brad looked at Jesus. Jesus, feel my shield, okay? Jesus nodded. Pancho and Maria came over and watched and listened. Pancho also felt Brad's shield. Brad looked at Tony and nodded. The ball that Tony threw was not fast, but it was dead on. The ball bounced off Brad's shield back in the direction of Tony. One of the boys ran out and picked up the ball. He threw it to another boy near Tony. One more Tony, please. Brad requested. The same thing happened. Jesus, are you ready? Jesus nodded his head. Brad felt for the shield in front of Jesus. It was there. Brad looked at Tony and nodded. Tony fired one at Jesus' chest. The tennis ball flew straight and bounced away about a foot from Jesus without hitting him. The crowd took in a breath. Jesus, you want to go for 10? Brad asked. Loud enough for Gloria to hear and share with the community in Spanish. Yes, si. Jesus understood and replied. Gloria shared with everyone Jesus' answer. Brad felt for the shield, then held up two fingers to Tony. In 30 seconds, it was over. The last ball Jesus was able to send halfway back. Gloria held up a yellow lanyard and explained to the community what Jesus had achieved. He had taken the first step in St. John's training. Gloria handed it to Pancho. We feel the head of the community might like to put this around his son's neck. Pancho raised the yellow lanyard and placed it around his son's neck, then hugged him. The community finally reacted with elite applause. Gloria held up one of the green lanyards and explained. She reached into her bag, pulled out her gun, and handed it to Tony. Brad took his place where Jesus had been. Tony returned, and when all was set, he fired at Brad. Brad let the bullet spin for a few seconds, about a foot from him, and four feet off the ground as the kids nearby pointed to it and commented. Brad reached out and took control of the bullet and then handed it to Pancho. It's still hot, Pancho shared. Someone asked, but what good does this do for us? Gloria responded in Spanish with, thank you, I will explain. The accomplishment of the third step is shown by the individual wearing the blue lanyard. In our Bible, we learn to do unto others as we want to be done unto ourselves. If an enemy wants to kill us, then God has told us we have the right to self-defense. If we can return the round that is meant to harm us to the individual that fired that round, are we not abiding by God's rules? Tony and Brad are going to show with a tennis ball how the shields can be made to work for more than just stopping things. Tony threw the ball, Brad's shield sent it back at twice the speed. Tony doubled it again. The ball went back and forth about 20 times, and then as it hit Tony's shield popping loud enough for all to hear, and fell apart as it hit the ground about halfway between Tony and Brad. We are done for today's demonstrations, Gloria announced. Jesus, you are now a teacher. Jesus looked at Brad. Teach all your friends. And when they can stop 10 tennis balls as you did in a row, then come to us and we will give out yellow lanyards to you to promote them. What is your goal in all this? Pancho asked. To make this community afraid of no one, Tony shared. We have against us 250 to 300 paid gunmen that do the dirty work of the seven drug lords. Pancho informed, we call them riders. Tony looked around. We are not teaching you how to murder anyone. We are teaching you how to defend yourself. Brad, Gloria, and Willa joined with me to stop 99 convicts with 60 machine guns. We had no weapons, only our training. If those convicts had gotten by us, they may have killed thousands of our friends, neighbors, and family members. 
Your community will be able to stand up and say no like we did. Jesus made an announcement. Who wants to learn how to do this? There were hundreds of I do in Spanish. Jesus started organizing things. Kids were lined up and balls were being tossed. Pancho and Maria, sometimes when a wrong is being committed, it requires the community to come together to solve it, Tony shared. We are giving you the tools and knowledge to do that. Pancho, look at what they have done today. We are not hungry. Our son can point to a bucket and fill it with good water. He can stop things with his mind. I can see that our son is healthy for the first time in his life. Our baby is starting to giggle. What did you expect when you got up this morning? Maria laughed. I know you prayed. Is this not some of what you asked for? Pancho laughed. He carefully hugged Maria. She was still holding a giggling little boy. Jesus came running up. I need another yellow lanyard. Gloria started digging into her carryall. She found five and gave them to Jesus. Moshe, gracias. Jesus carefully hung four around his neck and carried the fifth one back at full speed. The four looked at each other. Pancho Maria, we will see you bright and early. Gloria shared, tell Jesus we will get a big box of lanyards first thing tomorrow morning. From both Pancho and Maria, thank you, Tony, Brad, Gloria, and Willa. Maria turned to her two girls. Show them the swimming hole. Okay, mommy. The two girls ran after the northerners from Omak, Washington. The two daughters, Teresa and Anna of Pancho, and Maria showed them the nice lake. It was fed from the overfull of the water source above. It too had a beautiful waterfall. It was four times the size of the one further up the hill, covering over an acre. It smelled of chlorine, but all four felt it was no worse than the pool at the high school back home. The four stripped down to boxers for the boys in bras and panties for the girls. They enjoyed a good soak for a half hour. When they got out, they transported themselves to the camp. They were able to find towels and dry them off once they got there. The four working together set up their camp. After an hour and a half, Willa made some relaxing tea. The four each had an empty food bucket they were sitting on as they drank their tea. How did we do today? Tony asked. I think we did well for the fact we did not take into consideration enough that these people were starving to death, Gloria shared. Top thing on our objective is trust. I believe we have their trust, Brad offered. Did you hear while we were in the pool, the community cheering? There was that loud one. That could have been Pancho earning his yellow lanyard. Tony, we did not give out any lanyards until the next day in Moscow. I think this is going to hit like a match hitting a pool of gasoline. I wouldn't be surprised if we handed out 50 lanyards in the morning. Willa shared, listen, another cheer from the community. There is still a little bit of daylight left. Wow, you are right, honey. That door of trust did not open until after we stopped the coop on day two in Russia. Tony thought for a second, even then, we only had Dimitri and the 20 that could not speak English, excited about learning what we could teach. Tony smiled and raised his cup of tea. Welcome to the next state of our United States. I feel very good about what we have done. Here, here, Brad added. I wonder how the other teams are doing. Brad shared. Don't know until we go back, Willa shared. We need to all learn enough Spanish to communicate, Willa suggested. Everyone agreed. Gloria gave a class until the sun set on basic Spanish. The four listened to many more cheers from down below. The community was alive and well. They had made a difference.